Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Return from Beagle Point. We are continuing on our way back to the bubble after having made the journey out to the aforementioned destination. We are currently located here. I always like to give the new new viewers a chance to see where we are and where we've been. We came all the way from back over there, made our way back through the center of the galaxy, and we're on our way back to the bubble. We have about 232 jumps left until our current waypoint. Maybe another 100 jumps left after that. Don't really have a topic of discussion for today. We're just going to kind of chill and, uh, you know, do some, do some scanning as we cover some jumps and hopefully find another uh, 90 million credit... Uh, Stratum Tectonicus somewhere along the way, so uh, I'll, do, I'll do my best to have some kind of commentary as we go, but I don't really have a theme for this episode. Uh, I'm doing a lot of, uh, or I don't, don't want to say a lot, but I've added some uh, react content or response content or commentary comment or whatever to my channel, just because I'm trying to branch out a little bit and, uh, you know, have a little bit more variety in my content. I don't want to get stuck doing the same thing over and over again, and, uh, you know, a lot of this video game stuff gets really repetitive. Uh, but the the thing about that is is that it kind of uh, takes up a lot of my talking time or my, my talking reservoir or whatever. I don't know, wh whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of talking that happens in that, so uh, I'm not necessarily super motivated to do another half hour or more of talking for this uh, because of that. So uh, mostly I'm just going to be focusing on just trying to play. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. No, no, no promises. <laughs> no promises. Um... I may end up going back to doing the time-lapse videos, but even then, I don't know. I think I think for the most part, uh, the people who stick around are more interested in just kind of hanging out for a little bit and enjoying the ambiance of the game and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do want to see... Is my audio turned... I think I have my audio... No, nope, music's turned on. Weird. I, can't, I don't hear any music. I'm just like, I'm personally not hearing any music. I'm sure it's there, but I'm, I just don't hear it. <laughs> so we're mostly just, uh, we're just trying to make enough money to buy a fleet carrier and get the uh, elite status for our exobiology for those of you who are just joining us now. Um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm trying to find... We're focusing on high metal content planets and trying to see if we can find biological signatures on those because that gives us the best chance of actually finding those. Most of the other options out there don't provide quite as much as the Stratum Tectonicus does. You get like 90 million credits if you can get first footfall for, for a, a set of three Stratum Tectonicus for the data. And that's kind of what I end up going for. But uh, yeah, nothing much in that system... We'll just keep going until we find something interesting. Be sure to check out our other content with the other games that we're playing. I am doing a Weathering Waves uh, playthrough as well as the Honkai Star Rail playthrough. And I will eventually go back to my hunting content. I've just kind of been burnt out on that after so many months. I'm just kind of taking a break from that. But eventually I will bring that back and we will get back into hopping in there and trying to find some really cool trophy animals. Uh, but right now I'm just... Whew, after many months straight of just constantly doing videos for that, I'm kind of burnt out on it. Uh, this is a little bit easier because it doesn't take quite as much time. Uh, the hunting stuff requires me to actually, you know, put an hour or hour and a half just to get the 20 minutes or so of content that I typically get out of that. So it's just a lot of a lot of time during the day to have to commit to something that I don't. Ooh, biological signature. That's if it's just one, it's almost certainly just going to be a bacteria. So we're not going to waste our time on that. But if we can find a high metal content with two by light, well, I guess not. We're not going to find that because all that's left now is that. But there is a water world somewhere in here. So uh, if you look at the bottom here, the spectrum here uh, pulls out the different types of planets. This is a water world. You can see at the bottom right it tells us that. So uh, we have this water world there, and it's not very far away. So I'm going to target it with the T key, and then we're going to go ahead and go scan that because uh, that is a fair bit of cash that we get out of that. Uh, fair enough that it's worth just flying over to it and scanning it. We don't have to go through the landing sequence and search around for stuff. We just go to the planet, scan it real quick, and get out of here. So let's go ahead and go do that. Get it scanned up, and then move on to the next system. Uh, mostly ignoring icy bodies. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Mostly ignoring icy bodies uh, because they don't 
it's almost always just fonticula. Like it's almost always a, it's almost always a two species planet with bacteria and some kind of fonticula on it, which you know is kind of cool, but. At the same time, it doesn't really give that. It doesn't really give the kind of money that makes it worth taking the time to fly over to the planet, scan the planet, uh, do the whole landing sequence to get down to the surface of the planet, and then you know, it would be nice if they did some optimization for that. Honestly, as far as like the whole getting down to a planet kind of situation, it'd be really nice if we didn't have to fly to a planet to find out what's on the space, what's on it, like. Uh, if we were able to, it doesn't have to tell us exactly what kind it is, but if we could find out, hey, there's tech, there's tech, there, there's stratum on this one, or there's whatever, then we, or or at least just the number of biological signatures that are available on it, um, that would be kind of cool too. Just just so you know. Uh, hold on. Well, it does tell you the number when you when you scan it, but again, I also. I also have a problem with the method that they've chosen to do for that. So, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of the um, full spectrum system scanner. It's a much it's it's way too manual of a process in my opinion. I would much rather have something. I, I wish I would rather that they shifted some of the stuff around to where the um, the discovery scanner provides. Uh, provides all of the information that the de that the full spectrum system scanner provides, and then you just use you just use a detailed surface scanner if you want to go find something. Just completely remove this full spectrum system scanner. There's no reason for it. The AI on the AI on the ship should be able to do all of that on its own. I should I shouldn't have to do that myself. That's but you know personal opinion. I don't think it's I I don't like I don't think I think the mini game just eats up too much time and it's too fiddly for my for my taste. I should be able to just go through the list of stuff that's here. The scan reveals everything that I need to know to make some decisions as to whether I'm going to stay or not. And then, you know, if I'm if I stay, I can go find the stuff specifically. And if not, then I move on with my day. But I'm not a big I'm not a fan of the way that they've chosen to implement exploration. And, you know, they just they have this they have this really irritating tendency to want to make everything a manual process. And it just bugs me it really, really bugs me a lot. Geological. Uh, we're not looking for geological signatures, though. Okay, a couple more geological signatures, and then all of that. So, yeah, we're not going to find anything in this system either. Move on to the next one. <clears throat> so, yeah, a lot of times when I don't have a specific topic to cover, I end up talking about the things about the game that I, I would like to have changed. I try not to complain too much, but, you know, when you're talking about things that you would prefer to be different, it's hard for it not to sound like complaining. Dun, 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 dun. So we'll cross our fingers and hope that the next system has something. At the same time, though, I'm not always I'm, I'm not overly concerned with finding too much in the way of biology because we only need another, we only need another billion credits to get to the comfortable number that I want to be at. And I, I like to balance finding biological sources to go scan uh, against actually making distance and you know covering things in a reasonable amount of time. So. Even when we have episodes where we don't necessarily actually find anything, it doesn't really it doesn't really hurt my feelings when that happens because uh, it's kind of nice to make some distance. Let's see if we can find anything interesting here. Probably not. I'm getting the feeling that it, it's the icy bodies that are close. We got icy bodies that are close, and the other ones almost most of the time when you have like thirty ish or more bodies in a system, it means that there's another star far away that has a bunch of stuff around it. So. Not really going to waste too much time trying to find the uh, the stuff that's going to end up being a hundred thousand light seconds away or something stupid like that. We're just going to go ahead and move on to the next one. There's no point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this game seems to follow the panspermia version of life in the galaxy. You find you find life in one you find life on a moon around one planet, and then the other the other moons around that planet tend to have it, and then you don't find it anywhere else. That's not a hard and fast rule. It, it does, you know, sometimes you do find some things that are different, but for the most part, at least according to my experience so far, um, you either find it, you either find it in one spot or you don't find it at all. Now, I would be interested to know if there are, well, I don't know. I would have to, I would, you would still have to stop and look at the information for the star to, you know, find any information 
like I was going to say, I, I wonder if there are, you know, you look at the, the conditions of the system that you're in to see the likelihood of it actually having some kind of... Uh, of it actually having some kind of life in it, but, uh, alright, it doesn't look like... This is going to be another one of those ones where the, uh, the, uh, there's another star 100,000 light seconds away or something like that, so we're just going to go ahead and move on. I always get, uh, I'm, I'm always a little bit uh, disappointed when I pop into a system and it either has like two or three bodies or it has, uh, you know, 25, 30 plus bodies in it because you know it's going to be one of those ones where the stuff that you want is going to be the one that's far away and all the stuff that's close to you is just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because again, that's just that's been my experience. That's how it, it's how, how it's always ended up where ended up working out for me. But yeah, I would I would really like it if like the the time I, the pop in the discovery scanner provides me with all of the information that the full spectrum system scanner would provide. Uh, maybe give it a longer maybe give it a longer activation time to semi compensate for that. But I'm just I'm not a fan of having to stop, pop into this, and then manually look around to try to find, you know, individual bodies like this. It's just, it's too fiddly of a process for a ship that's supposed to be super advanced. And, you know, we already have AI now. You're telling me that in the future, they're not, they're not going to have it here. Like, why, why am I having to, why am I having to do this? This is ridiculous. I'm having to hunt and peck around to find the one specific thing out of this system that I want. It's just, it's really frustrating. I should be able to pop the discovery scanner, and then I, ho I hop over here, and it has a list of all of the planets, and I can look at the information, and maybe it doesn't give me every bit of information that I would like to have, but enough of it to be like, ooh, I want to go check that one out. Let me go check that one out. Like even just a li even just a biological uh, like the number of biological sources and geological sources, something like that. Just something that just something to give you the decision making to make it make you decide whether you want to go check that body out or not. Like, I, don't, I don't I don't like the I'm, I'm not a fan of the uh, manual process of this. It's personal preference. Mm. There's only three bodies in this one. No point in scanning anything here. So the good thing is, is that we'll either get a bunch of jumps in or we'll find something really cool. Either way, I win. <laughs> that's what I like about, that's what I like about the travel part of this. But I did get a request by one of my viewers to do some of the uh, F, uh, first person shooter stuff, the Odyssey related content, uh, when we get back to the bubble. Sounds like a decent break from just jumping and scanning and jumping and scanning and all of that. Uh, I, I, I did a lot of it when I was grinding for my gear and my suits and all of that stuff. So, you know, I have a lot of experience in it, even though I haven't really done it for a while. But um, we'll go back. We'll do, a f we'll, do we'll do a few episodes of that, see how they do. But realistically, I would like to focus on my, my exploration content and getting the fleet carrier out there and doing all kinds of cool stuff. That was just icy body, so we're going to move on. Getting the fleet carrier out there and, uh, you know, just focusing on just being out in space and enjoying that uh you know there'll be some mining content and stuff like that because i want to try to you know figure out how to be efficient with mining the um the fuel for the fleet carrier but other than that it'll be mining and exploration and uh you know that kind of thing and then we'll move the fleet carrier maybe once a week or once every two weeks it'll just kind of depend on uh <clears throat> it'll just kind of depend on how i feel It'll also depend on how hard it is for me to find the resources that we need. Okay. Five bodies in this system. <clears throat> and the ones that are available are high metal content planets. I like it when it's like that. But then... Oh, come on. You see what I mean? Like, I'm having to hunt around for this. It would be it would be nice it would be really nice if they offered like a tab option where it just like you hit tab and it zings you over to whatever the next body is and you can just tab through it until you find what you're looking for. That would be nice. Like just remove the mouse portion of it and just have it auto auto lock onto things based off of the direction that you press. That would be a really that would be a really nice compromise to uh, fully automating the process, but at least make it to where the ship is smart enough to single out bodies and I can just tab through them or something. Like that would be that would be really sweet. 
It's the manual having to like blindly look around and hope that you find something that really irritates me. I think that would be actually, uh, like, that's the first time that's popped into my head. I think that would be a really nice compromise. Auto, auto cycle through the objects that are there and I can just press, like maybe I just press a tab key and it cycles through them or I press a directional key and it selects the nearest thing in that direction. I think that's actually a pretty, uh, I think that would actually be a pretty decent compromise. Just anything that makes it so I don't have to do this part. Because this is this is just mind-numbingly annoying. See, like, look, I, I shouldn't have to do that. If I'm if I'm focused on a specific type of body, let me cycle through the ones that are just that type. <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me. With any luck, we're going to find something really cool in this one. No. <laughs> uh, I kind of I get kind of loopy when I don't have a when I don't have a script to follow. Okay, so see 29 bodies in this system. It means that in all likelihood, there's going to be another star that's in the system that's too far away for us to bother going after. So it's going to be another one of those ones that we're probably going to skip past because what we're looking for isn't close enough. Every once in a while, it turns out okay, but most of the time, it's going to be... I don't know. This one's actually not too bad. Every once in a while, you get one like this where it's a close system and there's just a bunch of, there's just a bunch of it right there next to you. But realistically, it's probably going to be this one bot, this one planetary system, and then the other ones are going to be real far away. Because, like, yeah, see, I'm not even getting any kind of stuff. And then we'll go around the system, and there won't be any more circles that appear. It's just going to be highlights because it's other icy bodies or something like that. So, yeah. And then there's going to be another star somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Hmm... What am I looking for here? There's another. There's there's, there's going to be another group of. Is it behind the star? Hmm. Well, there's other metal-rich bodies somewhere in the system, but none of these are. Okay, well that one's kind of showing. There are other metal-rich bodies somewhere, or high metal content bodies in the system somewhere, but I mean, it's got to be another. It's got to be another star, right? It's got to be. Oh, I stand corrected. This one's not like that. But even still, it's not showing up. And sometimes it gets like this. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the solution is. And that's one of the reasons why I would really like it if they just they streamlined that full spectrum system scanner process a little bit to make it less annoying. <clears throat> but again, uh, one one of the one of my viewers in response to something I said in a previous video. Uh, reiterated my previous idea about an interstellar super cruise, and I would love it if they would do an interstellar super cruise, and then then the f the full spectrum system scanner would be useful for identifying systems that have potential biological sources in them. That would be a really cool setup to use for that, forcing us to come into the in, forcing us to come into a system to find out if it has biology is just kind of annoying. So only two bodies in this one. And they're both stars, because you can see it on the radar there. On to the next one. But at this point, you know, in the, starting in the next system, we need to start looking for a place to land. So if we get lucky and there's some biology, that'll be cool. Otherwise, we'll just find a place to set down and call it a day. So, yeah, at, at this point, if we find a landable planet, I'm just going to go ahead and head over towards it. But other than outside of that, now we're done. A little bit of loading lag there. 18 bodies. Anytime I have between 10 and 20 bodies, that's always like that always gives me like a nice warm, fuzzy feeling because I usually have the best uh, the best luck in it, best luck at finding biological sources in that range. All right, well, it's going to be rocky bodies, but that's all right. 
Oh, I got rid of the... Got rid of that. Whoa, what the heck? It went all crazy on me. Two geological sources. Two more geological sources. Not getting too lucky with any of this stuff. These are these all aren't too far away. They're only they're less than two thousand light seconds away, so that's good. I would imagine that all of these are gonna end up well, maybe not. So most of these are going to end up being... I always, as soon as I start saying something, the game decides it's going to correct me. Uh, I would imagine most of these, then, are going to be around these gas giants. They're going to be moons. All right, another couple of geological. But yeah, I mean, look how long it's taking me to get through this. It's, it's just... Technology should be helping me get through this, not being something that makes me have to manually stumble through this. And I do this a lot more than most people do. I can't imagine how people who don't do this on a regular basis have to deal with it. It's not hard, it's just frustrating. And time consuming. Oh, biological, too. Sweet. I didn't even pay attention to what kind of world that was, but maybe we'll get lucky and it will end up being a uh, stratum tectonicus. How cool would that be? So, I'm going to cover the intervening distance, get down to the planet, or scan the planet, and then get down to it, and hopefully it's going to be some really expensive stuff to add to our bank account. That'd be pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Need the Jeopardy theme here. During a gravity well, that's going to slow us down. Great. Let's hurry up and get there so we can get our scan done, get down to the planet. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. All right. It generally is supposed to it's generally supposed to settle at seven seconds, but sometimes it just I don't know different effect different gravitational effects in the system some kind of mess sometimes messes that up. But we're almost there. Just need to get close enough to do the scan. We'll find out if we have something really cool or if it's just going to be meh. if it's bacteria if it's bacteria and stratum then there's a really good chance that it's going to be stratum tectonicus. Well, depending on what kind of body it is, depending on what kind of a body it is. I don't know. So we're almost within range. Come on, there we go. Four probes, that's not a good sign. Usually Stratum Tectonicus ends up being on those two probe planets, but uh, we'll see. Even if it says Tectonicus, I'm not sure that I don't think this is a I think this is just a rocky body. So there's it lowers the odds that it's gonna be exactly what we're looking for, I think. Bacterium and fungoida. I had a feeling it was gonna be something different. But that's alright. We'll uh we'll go down, see if we can find some of the fungoida. It's not that big of a deal. Get some scans done and then uh call it good. I think we'll go up to this big patch up. Well, I don't know. Should I go? Should we go to the big patch up there, or should we go straight into this one here? Nah, we're gonna go to the big patch up there. Orbital flight engaged. Just got to be real careful as you approach the glide. It's real easy to overspeed, and then you end up 100 kilometers up and having to boost your way down. Or turn around and try to... Hold on. All right. Or, or have to turn around and do your super cruise again. That's really annoying, too. <clears throat> I don't mind things requiring expertise, but it shouldn't be basic functions like landing on a planet. 
That's something the computer should just do for you. All right. Get our landing gear down to limit our speed, and we'll see if we can find some fungoida down here. Turn on our night vision to accentuate the contours of objects, which will make it easier to spot. And then we'll fly around for a minute and see if we can find some. There's only two, so it's either going to be patches of bacteria, which should be relatively easy to spot if they're not the same color as the ground, or they'll be contoured fungoida pieces that, uh, that should be relatively easy to find. Oh, but the fungoida in this game looks like looks kind of plant-like, so it'll look like uh, grass from far away until you get right up on top of it. But either way, it's not going to look like rocks or anything, so it should be easy to spot if we land it in an area where they're going to be. Sometimes you have to fly around for a minute before you spot anything. Not feeling too good about this. The problem is, is that fungoida likes to hide in crevices too, so <clears throat> a lot of times it'll it'll be located in a spot where you can't really land, or you, or you have to find uh, you have to like finagle your way into a landing, and usually it's not in flat areas like this. Like it happens sometimes it does, but most of the time it's not. And I haven't seen any bacteria as we came over here, so. Realistically, I think we just got super unlucky and landed in a spot where there's nothing. Because if the bacteria is the same color as the ground, it's going to be really hard to spot. And I'm not seeing anything other than rocks for contoured items. So I think we just I think we got really unlucky and landed in a spot where there's just nothing. Sometimes that happens. It's just something that happens. So I think we're going to go ahead and just land then, because uh, we don't have time to fly around forever trying to find anything. So hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button if you did so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing that now so that when the next video comes out, it'll show up in your feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click the join button, check out the list of options available there, and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a membership but would like to support the channel, you can always leave YouTube's version of a tip with that thanks button. Direct contributions are greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this channel into a full-time gig, which is the dream. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.